Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick overview of my Hackintosh Pro. This build was inspired by MKBHD on YouTube, so just wanted to give him a quick shout out. And to all the users and moderators of Tony Mac 86 without you guys' help, this build wouldn't be running right now. So let's just get into it. As you can see, I decided to go with the NZXT Phantom 410 is my case. It's white on black with blue LEDs. You can see through the bottom there. Let's get a little closer. I have two 120 millimeter fans in there. One is running on blue LEDs. And you can see here this side panel window. I have an Asus logo sticker there and the original Apple sticker there. Sorry, got the camera kind of off focus. And just pop this bad boy open and show you the components on the inside. As you can see there, I have a 140 millimeter NZXT stock fan with blue LED lights. I have an additional 140 millimeter fan blowing in here. Another stock 120 millimeter fan there. And then if you look up, I have my two Corsair 120 millimeter fans connected to my H100i Corsair cooling system which also brings me to the point of why I chose this case is because it hides the radiator at the top without you even having to see it. It's in there. And let's get into the other parts. Behind the Corsair H100i I'm running a i7-3930K 6 core processor with hyper threading which means it can be pretty much 12 cores when it's in hyper threading mode and it's unlocked meaning you can overclock it to any gigahertz you want it to be currently I have mines at 4.8 gigahertz it comes stock at 3.2 with a turbo of 3.8 and you can pretty much overclock it to anything you want as long as you have proper cooling system that's why I decided to choose the H100i and as for the motherboard I have an Asus X79 Sabertooth and the reason I chose that is just for mostly durability and it's made from military grade components so for me that's pretty good enough and as far as memory goes I have two 8 gigabyte Corsair Vengeance sticks both are 8 gigabytes piece and for a total of 16 and as a graphics card I decided to go with see a little bit right there the gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce GTX 670 WinForce Edition this bad boy is overclocked right out the box. It's a little dusty there. As you can see underneath it there, the reason they call it Wind Force is for the three fans they have running underneath there. To keep it extra cool. And as a power supply, I know a lot of people were saying that kind of went overkill with this, but I, for me, I'd rather have more than what I need than to just have enough. So I decided to go with a 1,000 watt white NZXT um, power supply there. It's 80 plus gold and let's see what else do we have in here. So uh, for storage I decided to go for my main boot up with my um, Mac OS. I have the OCV Vertex 4 128 gigabytes for blazing speeds. My boot times are ridiculous. I could shut down my whole build and boot it back up in less than 30 seconds. For additional storage there, I have a Western Digital 500 gig a hard drive, um, 2.5 inches, and you can see, but comes custom in there. And then for my Windows 8 setup, for my dual booting, I have a 320 gigabyte hard drive right there. I'm going to eventually opt out and get an additional solid state drive to set up a RAID 0 for my uh, Mac OS and then just have the additional 500 gigabytes for storage and then still use the 320 gigabytes for Windows. And I'm going to do a couple benchmarks just to show you guys how fast my build is. Okay guys, this is my main display setup for my Hackintosh Pro. As you can see here, I'm running a Westinghouse 32 inch LCD TV as my main display with my Apple wireless keyboard and my Logitech mouse there. So let's just go ahead and get into the benchmarks here. We're going to use Geekbench at 64-bit and let's just see what we get here. Again, um, just for you guys who don't know, if you've never used Geekbench, 
Your scores may fluctuate a bit. Mine's currently, or most of the time, do. They probably go up about a couple hundred points or so. I don't really think it's any big deal, especially with the scores that I'm getting compared to the stock Mac Pros that you can get from Apple. Their scores, they can probably get into the 18,000s, 19,000s without breaking a sweat. Here, you're going to see what my score is. Again, mine is overclocked to 4.8, so that's the reason for my scores. I did overclock it to 5.0 gigahertz and received even higher scores and there you go you can see there that 22,481 I'm just gonna go ahead and log into my account here just so you guys can see my previous scores and those are my previous scores there again this one right here was when it was clocked to 5 point gigahertz or 5.0 gigahertz sorry about that so you can see there it went up quite a bit by over a thousand points okay now we're gonna run Cinebench here and I do have my previous scores down below we're gonna do the OpenGL test first as you can see my previous two scores are 48.79 and 48.73 Sorry about the glare there, I'm using my iPhone as a video camera at the time. You can just see how good the graphics card is, how crisp everything comes out, no glitching or anything. And there you have it, 47.56 frames per second. Again, that one was a little bit lower than my previous scores for some reason. Again, it's, like I said, they fluctuate quite a bit, so it's not really that big of a deal to me. Now we're going to do the CPU test for the rendering. As you can see there, that's when the, the hyper-threading kicks in and acts as 12 cores. As you can see there, I scored 13.69 compared to my previous score of 13.67. And you can see the other models there below, which are Intel Xeons, which I'm imagining are Mac Pros, which you can see there scored way over the Mac Pro for rendering. All right, and as you guys can see, that's my Hackintosh Pro pretty good benchmark scores. I'm quite pleased with it. It's running as it should, smoothly, having no issues whatsoever. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I did give a shout out to MKBHD. His build is the exact same as mine, which his build was inspired by Yomang of Tony Mac 86 So if you go over there and search Yomang, he would give you a detailed instructions on how to get this build going with these specific parts. However, I would like to point out that his his instructions are a bit outdated, so if you need any assistance, I have a whole, I decided to make a whole folder full of all the parts, or full of instructions here. However, I will not provide the downloads below for these. You can go to Tony Mac and download any of these files here, which are all the multi beast For this specific build, in order to get audio working, you will need a sep two separate multi beasts. I know some people would just be like okay let's just download the one multi beast and that should everything you need but for this specific motherboard you will need the two separate multi beast versions that's one thing uh, MKBHD did not explain in his video for this specific motherboard it is a little bit more difficult to get your things up and running trust me I know I've spent probably I would like to say 
uh, three weeks getting this up and running. I'm com I was a complete noob. This is my first build, so I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. And I really don't want anybody to else go through that trouble. So if you have the same specific parts that I do, um, feel free to comment below and ask any questions you feel you need to ask. Um, I'll be more than happy to help anybody out. Again, I know how frustrating it can be. I spent just a little under over $2,000 on all these parts. And like I said, it took me about three weeks just to get everything running. So I know how frustrating that can be. So just like I said, just comment below or... Hit me up on Tony Mac 86 um, my Kel 716 look me up, I'll be there. It's the same as my YouTube page, uh, send me a message, and I'll be sure, happy, more than happy and willing to help you out. So again, this is my Hackintosh Pro 2011 series, and thank you.